This side event is co-hosted by the Japan Atomic Energy Commission, Cabinet Office of Japanese Government, and National Institute for Quantum and Radiological Science and Technology of Japan, QST, assisted by Japan Atomic Industrial Forum, JIF. As shown in the agenda of this, on the display, this event consists mainly of two keynote speeches and three technical presentations. First, let me invite the Vice Chairman of Japan Atomic Energy Commission, His Excellency Mr. Sano Toshio, to deliver the opening address. Mr. Sano had been a professional diplomat before his appointment as the commissioner. He has extensive experiences on the non-proliferation issues and, the non and the energy policy in diplomacy. He served as vice chair at 2015 review conference of parties to the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. He was also ambassador to the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva from 2013 to 2017, the, the ambassador to the Kingdom of Denmark from 2010 to 2013, the director, director general of Non-Proliferation and Science Department of Administrative of Foreign Affairs from 2008 to 2010. Uh, please welcome Mr. Sun. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator, for your kind introduction. Um, good morning, Vienna. Uh, this is from uh, Japan. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm grateful to you all for logging on this side event at the 64th General Conference of IAEA. On behalf of the co-hosts, uh, which were mentioned by the uh, moderator, I welcome you all. The title of this side event is Accelerated Progress of Radiation Oncology. This side event is aimed at to promote the research and development and international cooperation on the advanced cancer therapy utilizing radiation and accelerators. The utilization of radiation in medical treatment is an important aspect of atomic energy contributing to the well-being and the development of mankind. In oncology, it began with simple X-ray imaging uh, diagnosis and has developed to the variety of radiation therapies and diagnosis technologies until now. Radiation oncology is now imperative in medical practices and the further R&D is still ongoing. Ladies and gentlemen, today, the latest information about the R&D in radiation oncology and some therapeutic instrument utilizing radiation and accelerators will be introduced by the panelists, such as the heavy uh, particle therapy instruments and the boron neutron capture therapy instruments. Recently, they have been spotlighted by many experts and physicians in oncology because of their effectiveness in treatment. Finally, I'd like to appreciate those who kindly accepted to make statement today. Their names appear in the program. Thank you again for your participation today and your attention. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Asano. Then we move on to the session of keynote speeches. First keynote speaker is Dr. May Abdul Wahab, the Director of Division of Human Health at IAEA. Division of Human Health conducts clinical trials, training, and educational initiatives, and provides expertise to technical cooperation projects. She has more than 30 years of experience in patient care, teaching, and research in the field of radiation medicine. She is also a fellow of American Board of Radi Radiology, a fellow of American Society of Radiation Oncology, and was listed on the best doctors in America, among other honors. So, so Dr. May Abdel Wahab, now you have the floor.
start. Hello, can you hear me? Very good, thank you. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank the cabinet office, government of Japan, the Japanese Atomic Energy Commission, and the National Institute for Quantum and Radiation. Um, and what we would like to talk about today, um, as the uh, Excellency Toshio had mentioned, is the advances in radiation medicine and how it works into the international cooperation. Uh, please let me know if you can't hear me well, because I know that the connection sometimes is not great. So thank you again. The first thing I'd like to uh, discuss is, of course, the IEA. Why the IEA? Why are we here? And we know the IEA more as um, nuclear proliferation and, and safeguards and various other things. But in this case, the independent science and technology part of the IEA in terms of nuclear applications is why we are involved in health. So when we talk about nuclear applications, it's very important to know that there is an added value to these applications that is unique to them. For example, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, that in cancer, for example, that you can have a longer survival and uh, local control by radiation. Also, we have isotopic techniques in the middle that you can see can help um, address issues like you know, body composition and that which can support cancer patients throughout treatment to make sure that they're getting the proper nutrition. We also have diagnosis where you have CT images, PET images, things like that, staging, various things. Now, as we know, if you look at CT and, uh, and PET, and then you have hybrid scans in the middle, you have the structure and the function that you can see with, with using these techniques. We know that there are many different types of equipment, machines, external beam, robotic Linux, uh, pe uh, proton, gamma knife, brachytherapy, and we have advanced um, techniques as well, like uh, um, the Excellency mentioned, mentioned about in terms of BNCT and others that have made a comeback, which I'll mention briefly, but also in imaging where we have MR and um, Linux and Cobalt. So this is in looking at advances and what we're seeing that's very exciting these days. I'll just mention it very briefly before I get into collaboration and what the IA does. Basically, if you look at flash proton and flash photon, it's really something that's moving forward very fast. And the reason it is, is because flash exposures, which where the dose rates are over 40 gray per second, very quick, have been shown to have normal tissue protection in many of the uh, basic science studies. And because of that, there's a rush to develop these techniques and to study them from the radiobiological, from the physics and other areas. And so this is one area that could be exciting for the future. BNCT, we're all familiar with it, uh, has, has made a comeback now. And the reason it's made a comeback is because the technological advances that happened, many of them led by Japan, have led us to be able to make boron neutron capture therapy a reality again. And we're starting to see some interesting and exciting results that are coming out of this. So this is a very interesting thing that's, that's going on right now. But what are our challenges? So we have challenges in access, challenges in education and training, research, quality assurance, and awareness and communication of radiation. And all of us who work in radiation therapy or diagnosis understand that many of these things can be very difficult, especially awareness and communication in many um, areas of the world. When you hear nuclear or radiation, it has a negative connotation. And this is something we have to work on. So the first thing that we do is in collaboration is to how to assess treatment needs. And treatment needs, of course, um, they are extremely important because we have a collaboration called DIRAC where all the different um, um, institutions around the world will actually be able to put in their data and then we have an overall view of what's happening in the world. And um, this is a, a, a active slide, so it's not showing, but we can, we can share that after. 
Um, and challenges in access, if we look at the world, we'll see that the number of machines per million varies significantly across the world. And we're talking about just Linux and Cobalt 60 units, very basic machines. Um, and we see that 71% of them are in high income countries. So if we wanted to address the gap, we really need very efficient, very um, uh, you know, easy to use machines that we can actually treat more patients and we have to do a, a significant investment as you can see. So how, how does the IA collaborate with countries to be able to address this? Well, one is by planning and setup of new facilities. That's an extremely important part of what we do in terms of planning, design of these facilities, et cetera. And because of that, I think that uh, we have been able to support countries, especially countries that don't have a lot of facilities in setting up their first ones and in training people. If you look at the maps at the bottom, you will see that the maps almost are very similar. Um, and what this represents is where people come from to get trained and where they go to get trained. And this is interesting because it shows that in the same country, you can need training and you can give training depending on what the specialty is. We, as we've all experienced now with COVID-19, uh, we depend on IT-based technologies. At the IA, we've always depended on that, and we uh, collaborate with various groups to be able to um, address this, whether it's curricula or webinars and many other things. And this has been done for many for a very long time. Now we have a new uh, product called CELP that will be allowing us to do um, greater uh, things uh, such as, and I'll describe it later, but virtual reality training and that. Virtual uh, tumor boards are a good way to share and collaborate. And we have, uh, we started AfroNet, which is with these countries in Africa that you see on the map. And this has grown now and is being extended to other areas of the world. Um, and uh, I think, we are very excited because it means that it really has been very successful. We also have online contouring that's going into this and training, not just discussing patients. So this is the cell platform that I uh, encourage you to, to, to uh, reach out if you're interested in working on this. this. This is basically a clinical platform that goes from consultation all the way to audio assurance and allows everybody uh, to, who accesses it to go through the process as if they're shadowing another physician. Um, recently, we had a significant meeting with all the professional groups interested in the area, all the presidents and the leaders, and there was very, a significant interest in the educational initiative collaboration again, because none of us can do it on our own. So research is extremely important for us. And again, this is an opportunity for collaboration. We have um, uh, opportunities through data on health economics, through answering research questions, et cetera, and research twinning. This is an example of our research uh, um, coordinated projects around the world. You can see that there's a lot of um, countries that are participating in this. And it covers radiation oncology, of course, and includes various levels of research, including clinical trials. So we do randomized clinical trials, which are really important, especially in areas where you don't have enough patients to do it on your own in one country, for example. Patterns of care to see how people are treating or doing things, and then assessing educational interventions and other interventions. So if we're teaching people or we're training people, we need to know if it's effective. We have, in, in this large meeting with the professional groups, including JASTRO, we had a, a, a representative from JASTRO as well, um, have decided to attempt to uh, develop an international prospective database in radiation oncology. This could have a very important role with BNCT, of course. At quality assurance, we all are familiar that it's extremely important. And in terms of the beam output, which is the basis of everything else we do, we have the uh, quality assurance TLD audits of radiotherapy centers that you see here. And this is a dedicated lab in Cybersdorf where we have TrueBeam and we have uh, Cobalt 60 and, and various other uh, machines, HDR, and we can actually do TLD audits for the radiotherapy centers that are sent. We also have calibration services for SSDL labs. <clears throat> 
And finally, I want to talk about Orion, which is the uh, a new IEA global database. And in in um, in this way, we can communicate internally as a uh, as a group, and we can actually put in what we do in different countries or in our own country where we want people to come on board and work with us or, or help um, in a specific area. So this is a very exciting opportunity from um, that was recently uh, put together. And again, there's enormous interest in it from all the professional groups that were there. So regardless, I think collaboration across the board, whether it's in research, whether it's in um, prospective or uh, clinical trials or other, many different areas, education and training, this is an area that we're working on. And the IA is initiating a new um, uh, proton and ion um, uh, staffing initiative to look at what the, what the staffing needs are and various other things. So this may be very interesting for the group as well. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate being invited today and, uh, and good luck with the rest of you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Dr. Abdul Wahab, thank you very much for your very informative speech. Uh, next, I would like to invite Dr. Tsuji Ihiroshi, Director General of QST Hospital. He is an internationally prominent radiation oncologist utilizing particle beams and has been playing a central role in the heavy iron beam therapy for cancer treatment for long years at QST. He graduated from the Medical School of Hokkaido University and experienced the researchers at Tsukuba University, Paul Skera Institute of Switzerland before joining QST. The subject of his speech is present and future radiotherapy toward quantum scopel. Now, Dr. Tsuji, you have the floor. Thank you for the introduction. Okay. Uh, it's my great pleasure to my talk on the present and future radio therapy at this event. Uh, left, left figure on this slide is our current facility, HIMAC, built in 1988. We constructed the new facility with a rotating gantry next to the HIMAC in 2011. This is the most advanced facility at present but we have to develop a compact and low cost facility to be prevalent. On the bottom right, you can see the shape of quantum scalpel, a compact high spec heavy ion facility. We think that is an essential tool for the future radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is one of the most common treatment for cancer along with surgery and chemotherapy. It can be divided into two types, external and internal. X-ray therapy or particular therapy is categorized as the, as the external radiotherapy in which radiation is delivered from a source outside the body. The right figure summarizes popular external radiations. Proton and carbon ion are both within a particular therapy However, carbon ion is much heavier than proton, so it is often called as heavy ion therapy. Proton neutron capture therapy is yet another special type of external radiotherapy utilizing neutron capture reaction of boron 10 that emits short range highly effective particle within tumor cell. Advances in accelerator technology have made BNCT a hot topic in recent years. <clears throat> The other internal radiotherapy makes use of tiny sealed radioactive salts or radioactive medicine to irradiate the tumor from inside the patient's body. Recently, target, targeted radionuclide therapy with short-range alpha emitters has gained attraction. Now I'm going to focus on the heavy ion therapy that our QSD has carried out for more than a quarter century. Carbon ion beam has these advantages on clinical use. One is a physical advantage on dose distribution. 
It must exist in the most situation of radiotherapy in regard to sparing the normal tissue or giving higher dose to the tumor. Another one is biological advantage. It is also quite clear in treatment efficacy, particularly for the photon resistant tumor or locally advanced tumor. This is the kidney cancer case. It is well known radio resistant cancer while the normal kidney tissue is e easily damaged by radiation. For this patient, we performed localized radiotherapy by carbon ions. Consequently, tumor was completely disappeared and uh, <clears throat> inner function was preserved. The patient is now alive without any recurrence and side effect. This feat can be achieved only with well-localized, highly effective radiation using heavy ions. This is the history of carbon ion therapy in Japan. The clinical trial at the HIMAC was started in 1994. Following this, Kyogo, Guma, Saga, Kanagawa, and Osaka started the carbon ion therapy and now we can treat more than 3,000 patients in, a six, in six facilities in a year. Recently, a rotating gantry with scanning radiation became available at the NIRS, and the seventh carbon ion facility with the second ro rotating gantry is now being built at the Yamagata University. This graph indicates the number of patients at the QST according to the tumor site. Major tumor sites are prostate, bone and soft tissue, head and neck, lung, pancreas, and liver. Top three sites have already been covered with national health insurance in Japan. Skull base or eye tumor is quite rare in our country, but very suitable for this treatment and also covered with national health insurance. This is the yearly number of patients treated with carbon ion at, at, at the QST. We can treat more than 800 patients in a year. Blue bar indicates the patient treated in clinical trials. Red bar is advanced medical care, and green is national health insurance. Advanced medical care is a Japanese medical system to evaluate the novel medicine in regard to validity in coverage by national health insurance. The carbon ion therapy for the most cancer is expected to be covered with national health insurance at the next revision. I'd like to show you some clinical examples. This case is an estes osteosarcoma of the sacrum. Before the treatment, quite a large tumor distracted and embedded into the sacrum. Surgery could not be applied and X-ray is not effective to this tumor, but the tumor is disappeared by the carbon ion therapy. This is the only treatment that may save the inoperable osteosarcoma patient. Carbon ion therapy has substantial advantages over other radiotherapy also in prostate cancer. Relapse free survival rate for the high risk prostate cancer patient was obviously better than IMRT and protons. In addition, the incidence of radiation toxicities by carbon ion therapy were substantially lower than other radiotherapies. Those could be achieved by the bi uh, physical and biological advantages of carbon ion beam. Moreover, we could also obtain quite impressive results regarding the incidence of secondary cancer after carbon ion therapy for the prostate cancer. It is significantly lower than that after X-ray therapy and no cancer increased compared to the cancer mobility in normal population. This is quite an important fact to deny the wrong rumor that the heavy ion radiation causes high incidence of secondary malignancy. Unresectable pancreatic cancer is an extremely challenging disease with a very poor prognosis by current standard treatment. We believe this tumor is also a good candidate for carbon ion therapy combined with chemotherapy as shown in the case here. 
Actually, clinical results so far have demonstrated impressive survival probability that is uh, twice higher than chemoradiotherapy with X-ray. In order to spread this excellent treatment as a standard cancer therapy, the most important subject is downsizing. We successfully developed the second to third generation facilities. Those sizes were almost one third of the HIMAC. However, it is still quite large and should be miniaturized more. Our idea is a quantum scalpel, that is 5G heavy ion facility, which size is, uh, will be uh, one fortieth of the HIMAC. This machine is not only small enough to be installed in ordinary hospital, but also quite high performance. With this, we will develop much ion radiotherapy using helium, carbon, and oxygen as an ideal radiotherapy where we can modify biological effect in the tumor and the adjacent normal tissue. So we can carry out the radiotherapy with an optimal biological dose distribution. Utilizing this technology, one day treatment can be applied to a wide variety of cancers. We believe that multi-ion radiotherapy can be realized by the development of quantum scalpel as an ideal cancer therapy in the not so distant future. Thank you very much. Okay. Dr. Tsuji, Kamilu, thank you for your foresighted and informative presentation on the future of radiotherapy and quantum scope. Now we have just finished the keynote speeches. Thank you for your attention. Now we go on to the session of technical presentations. In this session, uh, Dr. Noda Koji, Executive Director of uh, QST, uh, will serve as the facilitator. Dr. Noda is a well-known researcher of the accelerator physics and played a, played a key role in the development of HIMAC, which was the world's first accelerator for heavy iron beam therapy. Before joining QST, he was once an engineer at Japan Steelworks after graduating from Kyushu University. Today, we will, we will have three technical presentations from three internationally reputed Japanese manufacturers of the relevant equipment to radiation therapies. Unfortunately, we cannot afford Q&A time within this event due to the time constraints. However, these present presenters from the manufacturer will respond to the emails for questions sent from the, the part participants to the email addresses uh, to be shown afterwards at the end of each presentation. Thank you for your understanding cooperation. Now I would like to ask Dr. Noda to start the session. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I'm very pleased to be given the opportunity of a facilitator of this session. This session with 40 minutes is frontline technology for development of radiation therapy system, presented by three leading companies of participate in Japan. So, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, Mr. Hirata, a senior fellow of Power System Division, Toshiba. He covers the technology field of the particle accelerator and the heavy ion radio field. Especially, he contributed to the development of a new treatment facility of carbon ion radio therapy with the spot scanning system or QST NIRS. At present, he is a project manager of heavy ion cancer therapy system. Mr. Hirata, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Noda. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to introduce Toshiba Heavy Ion Therapy System. My name is Yutaka Hirata uh, from Toshiba Energy Systems and Solutions Corporation. This is the contents of this presentation. The first, uh, Toshiba Corporate Profile. 
Toshiba was founded in 1875. Since then, we have tried to invent new technologies and products based on the venture spirit of the uh, startup spirit of the uh, company's founders. We have invented and produced many kinds of products uh, for people. Electric appliances such as laundry machine, refrigerator, vacuum cleaner, and so on. A semiconductor, healthcare product, power generation and distribution system, and others. Net sales was about 3.4 thousand billion yen. Basic commitment, a commitment of the Toshiba Group is committed to people, committed to the future. At Toshiba, we commit to raising the quality of life for people around the world, ensuring progress that is in harmony with the planet. These are the cutting edge and cutting edge technologies to realize precision medicine. Heavy ion therapy is in treatment phase. Toshiba Corporation consists of four companies. Heavy ion radiotherapy system is under Toshiba Energy Systems and Solutions Corporation, we say ESS, Power Systems Division. President and CEO of ESS is Mamoru Hatazawa. The business domain of ESS is as follows. Large scale power generation systems include the nuclear power plant, a transmission and distribution and energy storage such as hydrogen-based energy supply system, renewable energy, and heavy ion radiotherapy system. The second, heavy ion therapy system. Okay, this is a dose distribution in water. Upper left figure shows dips dose distribution of radiation in the body. Relative dose versus dips from the skin. Proton and heavy ion have physical phenomena called black peak to irradiate the target tumor accurately. We can control the beam energy by accelerator, means we can irradiate the target tumor accurately with less side effect. Upper right figure shows the lateral dose of carbon and proton. Carbon ion has sharper edge than proton, which shows less side effect. This is a basic treatment flow, diagnosis, decide treatment policy, CT imaging to make treatment planning, dose quality assurance, patient positioning, and therapeutic radiation. The third, proven and exclusive technologies will be presented. Our system has many advanced technologies which make our system different. Some of them are advanced operation of the accelerator system, superconducting compact gantry, automated patient positioning, three-dimensional high-speed scanning and respiratory gated irradiation. The features of each technology will be explained later in this presentation. This slide describes our old, ah, sorry. This slide describes our old registration for fast patient positioning. This is a short video with actual registration of three-dimensional digitally reconstructed radiograph. Image obtained from the treatment plan and two-dimensional X-ray uh, image, which is blue image, obtained during positioning. Time of the calculation of difference in position takes only 10 seconds. That deviation information is then sent to the patient couch and positioning is completed within three to five minutes automatically. Our quick patient positioning contributes to increase efficiency and patient throughput, having in mind that major part of treatment time is used for the patient positioning. In this next few slides, I'd like to introduce our beam delivery system represented by high-speed scanning technology. This is an image of 3D pencil beam scanning irradiation, where lots of pencil beam are, are di directed into the target in order to cover the three-dimensional volume, allowing the best uh, confirmation with the tumor. Higher the beam energy is, deeper the beam can reach. The maximum range is 30 centimeters in depth. 
In a latest energy scanning method, black peak depth can be controlled by directly changing beam energy from accelerator, which eliminates the range shifter and improves penumbra as a result. This is one of our exclusive technologies. Comparing to the conventional method of irradiation, such as shattering or bubbling, tensor beam scanning is much more efficient due to minimize beam loss. It also allows to reduce waste by elimination of use of multi-leaf collimator and compensator. This is an example of liver cancer treatment at uh, QST and IRS using the most advanced method of internal respiratory gating with marker-less tracking. Tumor is tracked with X-ray imaging and irradiated only when it is within the target window. In the next few slides, I'd like to introduce our rotating gantry for carbon ion therapy. You can see the picture of the treatment room with 360 degree rotating gantry at NIRS, new heavy ion treatment facility. Where the treatment started since 2016, this is the world's first rotating gantry with superconducting magnets utilized for the carbon ion therapy. Advantages of rotating gantry is as follows. Reduce patient physical and mental burden, shorten positioning time, accurate irradiation without deformation of the body. So in our new type superconducting rotating gantry, we have succeed 40% reduction of the size of NIRS type gantry, which is comparable with gantry for proton therapy and will contribute to reduce building size and cost. This new type of compact rotating gantry has been sold in Yamagata University Hospital in Japan and will be in Yonsei University Cancer Center in Korea and others. The fourth, the experience and partnership. In this slide, I'd like to introduce our experience in supplying carbon ion therapy equipment. We started to supply treatment rooms to QST and IRS in Japan we have supplied two treatment rooms with three-dimensional pencil beam scanning irradiation system. In 2016, we have supplied additional treatment room with world's first superconducting rotating gantry for carbon ion therapy. In 2015, we supplied whole carbon ion therapy system to Kanagawa Cancer Center in Japan. The Kanagawa Cancer Center has four treatment rooms with fixed nozzles. Our third carbon ion therapy system for Yamagata University is currently under testing and the treatment is going to start in 2021. Yamagata University's carbon ion system has a new type of compact rotating gantry. In the year of 2018, we have signed a contract with Yonsei University in Korea. Yonsei University's carbon ion therapy facility will have two new type compact gantries and one fixed beam treatment room. Also, we have latest news. The end of this August, we have finally contracted with Seoul National University Hospital in Korea. They will have one new type compact gantry and one fixed beam treatment room. Our users network is getting larger and we would like to welcome you to carbon ion therapy network in order to discover the potential of heavy ion therapy to fight the cancer. Toshiba will contribute for conquering the cancer for people and create our bright new future by supplying heavy ion cancer therapy system using cutting edge technologies, such as superconducting technology for downsizing the system. Thank you for your attention. Mr. Hirata, thank you very much for your valuable presentation. And then uh, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Umezawa, Technical Director of Smart Digital Solution Business Development Division in Hitachi. He has been a development leader of newly particle beam therapy system. He has always played an important role in particle beam therapy project from MD Anderson Cancer Center to Mayo Clinic in the USA. He was also reading experiences for a government funding 
R&D project with Hokkaido University. Uh, Mr. Umezawa, please give a presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Noda, for kind introduction. Can everyone hear me? Okay, uh, at first, I'd like to show my appreciation to the organizer to have a great opportunity to have a presentation here in such an outstanding event to present our particle therapy solution. I am Masumi Umezawa from Hitachi Limited, a technical director of Smart Therapy Division. Uh, let me start with my presentation from the introduce our company's vision. Uh, our company's vision is the improving the uh, quality of life and adding values for customers for three values, social, environmental, and economic values. And through the uh, five solution integrated with various type of product by integrating by the uh, IT technology we call the MADA. Uh, particle therapy is uh, one of the uh, part of the smart therapy business in smart life solution. So uh, moving on the next part, I'd like to introduce Hitachi particle therapy solutions. Uh, I want to start with this topic, uh, where did we, we mean the particle therapy, come from in Hitachi? Um, various and wide range of technologies from advanced science and general industry uh, come from the uh, nuclear power and technology. The particle therapy system is one of the best examples to the application of this kind of technology. And the three key things uh, from the uh, nuclear technology, one is the safety for the both of patient and staff. The second is the stable operation with high reliability. This is also very important in medical device. And the third is the ability of project execution in Japan and also in overseas. Uh, this will show the, our particle therapy lineup. Now, uh, mainly two types of ion species, proton and carbon, is utilized in particle therapy. Hitachi is providing the proton therapy system in various configurations, from the single room to multiple rooms, with rotating gantry uh, to irradiate the beam 360 angles to the patient. For the carbon system, we provide multiple room and with fixed field room, and rotating gantry is now under development. Uh, our synchrotron based system is capable for two types of ion species with one synchrotron. This picture shows the hybrid system, and one synchrotron accelerates both proton and the carbon for the, uh, each treatment room, proton treatment room, and carbon treatment rooms. And this will show the uh, Hitachi's uh, distinguished technologies. And the first one is the, for the precise patient positioning, we have to have a 3D imaging before treatment. So by using the gantry mounted combium CT, we can take some 3D images before the treatment. And the other is the one with the spot scanning, and another is real-time image gating technology. And spot scanning is already explained, but I, again, but this is the uh, spot scanning technology. Uh, we have a fast vendor of get FDA approval in the United States with the MD Anderson in 2008. A target was divided by spot and the uh, bit to realize the very conformal dose distribution to the tumor, like a painting like this. And, and real-time carried therapy is for the motion uh, management for the movable targets such as lung or liver. Uh, small fiducial implanted to the close to the target, and by using two x ray, the target and the fiducial position can be uh, can be understood, understood in a real time manner. And if the uh, fiducial position comes to plan the position, beam irradiating to the tumor to minimize the dose to the uh, outside of the target. Uh, this is the uh, actual clinical movie. Uh, this is a pancreas case. 
but you, you can see the block one block dot move with the restriction and come to the plan position be resolved. By using this technology, 50% or more patient is treated by using technology in Hokkaido University. Uh, thanks to the advancement in the particle therapy technology by Hitachi, we expand our therapy, particle therapy business in worldwide. As you can see, the 13 facilities overseas in North America, United, Europe, and Asian area, not only Proton, but also the hybrid system and carbon system. And also in Japan, we have 19 facilities in Japan, uh, also including the power proton system and carbon system and hybrid system from northern part to southern part in Japan. And I will move on to the recent updates in last year and this year. Uh, this is the two milestone in the United States. The first one is uh, we opened the proton therapy system at Shibley Memorial Hospital. This is a member of Johns Hopkins Medicine in Washington, D.C. area. Uh, this is a picture of the opening ceremony in last October. This is the newest proton therapy system in the United States. And the second is the announcement with Mayo Clinic to build the next generation carbon ion therapy treatment facility in North America. Uh, this is a press conference in last November, and I was here. And this is also the uh, two miles on in Europe. So we provide a second in Europe and first in Italy, a single room solution in the Milan, Italy. Uh, Kunao is one of the particle therapy system, uh, system uh, center in Italy, but we installed the next to the center single room therapy system. And the second one is uh, our first proton therapy system in Europe opens at Spain, Madrid in this May. Uh, this is very tough uh, work with both of the Hitachi and the medical source because yeah, we have to open this system in, under the COVID-19 situation. But uh, we work so hard to provide the uh, proton therapy system as soon as possible to the people, the patient in Madrid in Spain. Uh, this is also the expandable system. So as you can see, you may see the, uh, they have the open vault in country room. So the second room can be installed in future and commissioned while clinical operation continues in the first treatment room. And we have the Hitachi held a mutual meeting and for the collaboration with leading institutions to discuss the future of particle therapy system by sharing Touching our roadmap and also the uh, customer's requirements or wish. Last year, uh, 100 people from 29 institutions attended in this user's meeting. This is a very good big group to tell us the real customer needs. And also, this is a very good opportunity to networking for the among users to have a new development or other activities. And the yes, a little bit touch on the uh, uh, keynote speech. We, Flash is about new horizon of the new radiation oncology. So we already synchrotron tested for the capability for the ultra high dose radiation. Hopefully, hopefully everyone can see this flash type of radiation by using a synchrotron. So we have already beam test and simulation study uh, cooperation with the uh, Nagoya Proton Therapy Center. We have already 600 gray per sec, and we realize scan beam with, by using our synchrotron based system. So, let me summarize my presentation. Our Hitachi is the world leading particle therapy company with the key technologies from the nuclear and power plant experiences, and also the world's most particle system lineup a proton and the carbon and hybrid system. So as I showed in the user meeting slide, we are the long time committed partner with R&D activities through collaboration with the various type of customers in our world. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation, Mr. Omega. So <clears throat> I'd like to introduce the final speaker. 
Mr. Kameda, uh, General Manager of Marketing and Sales Department in the Medical and Advanced Equipment Unit, Smith & Heavy Industries. His responsibility is uh, marketing and sales of medical equipment in global market, such as a proton therapy system, photon neutron capture therapy system, and the PET radio tracer production system. Uh, Mr. Kameda, please give a presentation. Hello. Can you see my screen? Yes. So I want to start my presentation. Uh, thank you for giving us opportunity to uh, present our technology. Uh, today I want to uh, introduce our particle therapy system. Uh, one is the proton therapy and uh, another is the BNCT. Uh, this is our uh, company uh, medical business domain. The left side is uh, radio pharmacy, and the uh, right side is particle therapy. Uh, so today uh, I want to explain uh, proton therapy system. <laughs> so, sorry, presentation is not shown. Presentation is not shown. So oh, sorry. Okay, please start sharing the presentation. Yes. Can you see? Okay, sorry, uh, I want to uh, repeat again. So uh, today I want to explain our particle therapy system. One is proton therapy and the another is BNCP. Uh, this is um, our uh, medical business domain. Uh, left side is uh, radio pharmacy and the right side is particle therapy. So today I want to introduce uh, proton therapy system and the BNCP system. Uh, this is a reference map of our pet cytokine system. Uh, we have a, a pet uh, radio pharmaceutical production systems, and um, uh, more than 200 uh, references are located in Asia. Uh, this is a, a reference of uh, our proton therapy and the BNCT system in Asia. Uh, red uh, mark means um, uh, proton therapy, and the right uh, orange mark is um, uh, neutron uh, proton neutron capture therapy. So we have uh, seven proton therapy facilities and uh, three uh, boron neutron capture therapy systems. Uh, the first, so I want to explain our proton therapy uh, system. Uh, there are three points of our uh, strengths. Uh, one is the products. And so we have a, a fast IMPT scanning technology designed for moving targets. And then uh, we have a compact solution. And uh, uh, there are second uh, service strengths. So we have dedicated local service team and uh, also local company. So it can uh, reach, the, uh, reach the fast troubleshooting. And the third is experience. Uh, so we have uh, more than uh, 20 years operation. Uh, this is a, a key technology for fast scanning uh, technology. So. Uh, Number one is a continuous high beam current and a highly stable accelerator. We have a 230 uh, MeV cyclotron. And the second is a fast layer switching. And the third is a fast intra scanning. Uh, so this is the background of our motivation of to develop the fast scanning. Uh, in the left side, uh, you can see uh, there are uh, patients uh, who has a, a liver, pancreas, lung, and s first cancer. Uh, those cancers has a, a moving, a need a treatment for moving organ. And the uh, right side, uh, you can see the US and the European countries. Uh, so those patients are less than half. So um, we have developed a fast layer switching. And uh, uh, in case of uh, one liter volume, uh, 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter, and uh, 12 layers, and uh, uh, those 2.1 gray. So uh, in that case, uh, in the conventional method, uh, our uh, scanning time was uh, 32 seconds, but now uh, we reduced to uh, 13 seconds. Uh, this is a, a compact solution. So we have a, a 360 uh, degree uh, compact gantries. So length is 50% shorter, 
and the volt is 30 percent smaller. Uh, this is a, a compact single room solution. Uh, we have a, a double decker type uh, single room solution. Uh, lower floor is cyclotron, and upper floor is a treatment room. Uh, this is a, a horizontal case and uh, four gantry type. So the space is uh, thirty percent uh, reduced. So uh, if the same area, so one more gantry it can be installed in case of a, a compact gantry. And now uh, I want to explain a uh, new developed boron neutron capture therapy. Uh, this is a, a explanation of the clinical aspects. Uh, this is a, a recurrent but parotid gland cancer. Uh, so uh, this patient uh, received the BNCT at the uh, new reactor-based BNCT at the Kyoto University uh, Research uh, Reactor. So uh, this patient uh, takes took, uh, uh, three times of uh, BNCT. So uh, the third time, two weeks after uh, third BNCT. So you can see the uh, tumor was uh, uh, clearly uh, disappeared and the surface of the skin is uh, good. Uh, this is explanation of uh, physics, uh, how BNCT works. So uh, thermal neutron, uh, boron uh, easily absorbs thermal neutron and uh, resulting in nuclear fission. So alpha and the lithium nuclei uh, emitted and uh, these are the very high LED and so uh, only uh, tumor cells are selectively uh, destroyed. Uh, this is a, a neutron source issue. So uh, as uh, I explained, that, uh, at first the BNCT was developed by using a nuclear research reactor, but it is not uh, realistic uh, to install the uh, nuclear reactor in the hospital. So we have developed accelerator-based BNCT. So uh, in, by this solution, uh, we can provide a compact and a safe system. This is a uh, history of our development. And now uh, nuclear, uh, sorry, uh, clinical trial uh, started in 2012 uh, together with the cooperation of Stella Pharma, that is a drug company. And the uh, clinical trials for brain tumor and the head and neck uh, completed uh, 2018. And then uh, we got the uh, approval of medical device uh, for the first time in the world uh, from Japanese government and in March 2020. And the clinical service uh, started in June of this year. Uh, our BNC system nuclear are uh, consisting of uh, not only uh, irradiation system, but uh, uh, nuclear uh, dose engine. Uh, this dose engine is a uh, Monte Carlo based uh, dose engine and the uh, uh, graphical user interface is uh, provided by uh, ray station. Uh, this is single room plan. Uh, so uh, we have a, a preparation room and the patients are set up by chair or couch system and move to a treatment position. So the, we'll explain the very short uh, movie. Uh, proton beam is uh, irradiated on the uh, beryllium targets and they generate a um, uh, neutron and, uh, uh, and there is an energy adjustment and the uh, examiner neutron is irradiated in the patient. So the cancer, uh, only tumor cells are destroyed. Thank you very much for uh, our explanation. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for your interesting presentation, Mr. Kameda. So uh, on behalf of uh, all participants, I'd like to express our thanks to the speakers. I can recognize that each company has been developing a cutting edge technology. So I'd like to give a simple, some simple questions for the each speaker. Uh, Mr. Hirata, Oshiba, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you will have many orders, 
of the, your machines from host server in the world. How many machines can you deliver in a year? Okay, uh, at the present time, two machines per year are available. Yeah, but uh, since we have enough manufacturing space and manpower, we can provide more than that, depending on the number of the order. So we are waiting for many orders. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So next, uh, the Mr. Umezawa-san. Uh, I did give a talk. Uh, uh, Hitachi is a hybrid machine, which can deliver the boros, proton, and carbon ion beads. My question is that, don't you have a plan to deliver the helium ion instead of a proton? I think the helium is much better uh, than the proton uh, because of uh, the smaller penumbra. How, how do you think about this? Yes, uh, we Hitachi understand the benefit of helium. So, uh, you know, the, our synchrotron-based system is capable to provide helium with the additional ion source. It's, it's not secret we can provide to the old customers. And the, in our current carbon system through the synchrotron, beam line, and irradiation system is designed to the capable to the carbon and also helium. So anyway, Hitachi can offer the helium therapy if the customer requests us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so uh, finally, the, I, 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 I will give out the question for the Kameda. Uh, I think the BNCT is the one of a great cancer therapy technology. So my question is, uh, which do you recommend proton radiotherapy or BNCT for your customers? Yes, uh, we, uh, so far we got uh, approval for medical device for BNCT uh, for recurrent uh, head and neck tumor. So uh, we try to widen the, such application of BNCT, but um, uh, generally speaking, so uh, proton therapy uh, can apply to uh, many cancers, but the BNCT is now limited. Uh, but uh, in the future, uh, if the uh, BNCT is applicable for many tumor, uh, but um, still there is some restriction of the depth of the uh, effectiveness. So uh, so far BNCT is uh, application is a shallow uh, tumor, and the uh, uh, proton therapy can apply to even for the uh, deep tumor, uh, seated at uh, 30 centimeter. So uh, we can uh, choose either uh, technology. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all speakers. I'd like to express again my appreciation uh, to three presentations. So uh, I'd like to cross uh, this session. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anoda and the representatives of the three companies, thank you very much for the fine session with the interesting presentation. Further accelerated development of technology of radiation therapies will be demanded for the better medical well-being. We are sure that all of you will meet such expectations. Uh, now, we will finally move on to the closing session. Today, uh, we have uh, Dr. Hendy Guilano, Deputy Chairman of Indonesian Nuclear Energy Agency, BATAN. He has been in the research and development area for the, the, for the application of isotopes and radiation technology for long years and made an enormous contribution to the peaceful use of atomic energy science and technology in Indonesia. He has also been an important member of FNCA conferences for long years. So please welcome Dr. Henry Milano. Now you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, Professor Hokukotaro. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes, fine, yeah. yeah thank, okay, you. thank you. Excellencies, honorable speakers, panelists, and participants, good morning and good afternoon. It is my great honor for keeping me in the floor. I would like to start my remark by citing IAA Director General His, His Excellency Rafael Mariano Grossi's statement during the commemoration of World Cancer Day on 4th of February this year that until now, cancer still becomes one of major challenges in human health issues worldwide, including addition technology for decades, 
so that it provide opportunities to overcome this major challenge and provide smart solution to achieve one of important sustainable development goals, namely increasing public health. In the ministerial level meeting, MLM of Forum for Nuclear Cooperation in Asia, FNCA, on December 2019, His Excellency Mr. Takemoto Naokazu, the former Minister of State for Science and Technology Policy of Japan, stated that in FNCA, the relevant project on radiation oncology have established standard treatment methods for cervical cancer, epiglottis cancer, and breast cancer, which are of high incidence and, and mortality in Asian region by accumulating 717 cases of treatment record. In addition, a revolutionary treatment techniques has been put into practice to save life of people with cartilage or head tumor by making use of heavy particle radiotherapy equipment recently. These conditions were incurable until quite recently. However, until now, we are all still faced with challenges in delivering this incredible technology to all people. With radiation technology, we can cure tumor. With radiotherapy, we can ease pain. With radiation technology, we can do early detection of diseases. But in one third of low and middle income countries, there is still a lack of radiotherapy treatment units and facilities. Rapid technology development, especially in automation, artificial intelligence, and matching learning, provides new opportunities to deliver more precise and effective diagnosis and therapy to the public. Sustainable research and development to harness these opportunities and technology development must be sustained to provide new technologies and procedures of radiation technology and ensuring these new technologies will be able to address emerging and re-emerging diseases. Human resources capacity also need to be addressed to ensure our health and medical system will be equipped with knowledgeable and experienced practitioners who will be able to deliver radiation technology timely and effectively to our people. Today, we are grateful to have in this side event strict stakeholders who have been actively involved in addressing the challenges. First, IAEA with its program and activities and facilitating cooperation and partnership worldwide in radiation technology, especially in radiation oncology development to ensure that nuclear sector could provide new and accessible advanced technology worldwide, knowledge transfer and also capacity building among member states which will secure our role in addressing global health challenges. Second, Japan Atomic Energy Commission, GIEC, and National Institute for Quantum and Radiological Science and Technology, QST, as representative of Cabinet Office, Government of Japan, with their sustainable commitment in providing environment for implementing sustainable research and development in radiation technology. An excellent example to other member states, to follow this practice to ensure all countries will contribute in technology advancement in this regard. Private sector and medical practitioners come from Toshiba Energy System, Hitachi Limited Company, and Sumitomo Heavy Industries, who continuously in their capacity bridging advanced radiation technology to deliver proven clinical methods, highly sophisticated radiation medical instrument, and highly qualified personnel from laboratory to hospital, and of course, to the public. On behalf of site event organizer and international nuclear community, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for your contribution in this excellent site event. The information delivered in this site event will be very useful to support global effort in addressing human health challenges. A high appreciation especially addressed to quantum and radiological science and technology, QST, BKS, collaborated with Toshiba Energy System, Hitachi Limited Company, and Sumitomo Heavy Industries 
that recently developed the quantum medicine and medicine and medicinal care combined combining quantum imaging targeted radiation therapy and quantum scalpel for zero death by cancer purpose lastly but not least i would like to emphasize the importance of international community cooperation and partnership we noted and highly appreciate iaea work together with member state especially those with advanced technology development and international communities including from private sector in addressing uh, these challenges through collaborative work international community highly appreciate iaea technical cooperation program uh, which enable collaboration in knowledge transfer advanced technology and equipment provision and also human resources development we commend this incredible effort and support of stakeholder involved including those who participate in this excellent site event to continue our work together delivering advanced radiation technology to the public supporting sustainable development goal increasing public health with that I would like to end my remark and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Wirando. Uh, now we are closing this side event. I would like to express our deep appreciation to all of the participants and speakers to today uh, on behalf of the organizers. Uh, I think we could we could share the splendid time. The, the information of the uh, of the address of the question address for the questions on the technical presentation will be shown also on the last thank you slide. It will put on the screen for three minutes for your uh, from now for your copy. Now I declare this side event is concluded. Thank you very much. <laughs>